early nominating contests build momentum for 2024 contenders seeking the White House. C-SPAN is the place for political campaign enthusiasts with unfiltered coverage surrounding the early primaries and caucuses, as well as speeches from key battleground states. Whether you're interested in your state's race or want to follow all of the political events, you can get immediate access to what the candidates are saying, plus nominating results in real time with a free mobile app. C-SPAN now or watch live on the C-SPAN networks. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Who remembers the BJ and Bill show all those years ago on WOLZ? Well, many have said they missed the show, and guess what? They're back! Welcome to the BJ and Bill podcast! Welcome to BJ and Bill the podcast, a part of the Podcast Playground Network, and this episode 52. Unbelievable. One full year of episodes. Now, it hasn't been a calendar year because I think we started with two or three of them ready to rock. But still, 52, is the, it's a year. Come on. Yeah. We started at the, uh, we actually joined the network uh, the last day of September. Oh, you checked on that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, well, I knew it was the last day of a month. Okay. And I know the first two weeks we recorded like two and two, and then we got it up, you know, on the mighty network. And then, you know, we did one, for, you know, like one a week from there. Right, right. On the on the fabulous Podcast Playground Network, by, where, by the way, if you haven't yet, please feel free to leave this podcast a five-star review and show some love for 52 weeks of podcast. Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. And as I was mentioning to you before we started, the, of course, the maintenance crew, grounds crew is outside right now. So if it gets too loud, I apologize, but it should, we should be okay. Should be okay. Um, my wife's awake and doing laundry and, and getting things out of the refrigerator. So if okay. I make a lot of noise on this end, I apologize also. And we always say that, but when I listen back on the shows, I never hear anything. So somehow the engineering magic is being worked again. So so anyway, <laughs> never mind. 52 shows. How the hell does that feel, BJ? Adam? How does that feel? It feels pretty good. You know, what would we do? We did the BJ and Bill radio show for, I'm going to guess, a good, you know, like we had a couple little holes there where we went to different radio stations. But I think probably overall, maybe seven, seven years, maybe even eight. You know, my first marriage only lasted eight years. The BJ and Bill on radio lasted about the same amount of time. (laughs) Yeah, of course, the big... The big chunk of that was, was at WOLZ, Oldies 95, and that was probably five years, four or five years, something like that, and where that was, you know, that was the crowning achievement of the, the BJ and Bill show. But you're right. We were at other shows for a time around there as well. So, yeah, it was it was, uh, it was was quite the run, quite the run. And those stations, of course, never let BJ and Bill do the BJ and Bill no. show, even though we were in the no. same market, we had fabulous ratings. They go talk for 30 seconds and then you two shut up. Right. And, and of yeah. course, where do we get in the ratings? Nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like, we, we see what you did at the other radio station. We saw that you were the absolute top of the ratings. You were like, you were like Tom Brady. You were like the goat for a couple of years in terms of your demographics and your ratings and all that. But now we want you to do something different. Oh my God, who thinks of that? Who thinks of that? I mean, who who looks at at success and goes, "Yeah, that's we're not going to do that." Some moron really? consultant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. I like to say so, their name, but I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't. You know, I couldn't tell you the name of a radio consultant if you put a gun to my head i just have no freaking clue so yeah i know this is a a non-starter question for you (laughs) 
Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over a 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I know you probably watch some, you know, preseason football, which I don't get really excited about preseason football. Not really, but I have watched, yeah. But the end of the regular season for NASCAR, the Cup Series, ended in Daytona on Saturday night. And I have watched NASCAR for quite a long time. And I have never, ever that I can remember seen a crash as violent as the one Ryan Priest was in on Saturday night. Really? It went up in the air like a rocket. Wow. Twirled probably seven to eight times. Well, actually, it went on the went in the air, came down almost nose first, jumped back in the air, flipping like I'm saying seven or eight times, back Holy hit the cow. ground again on its top, back up in the air again tumbling another two or three times, finally landing on, you know, well, it didn't have very, it didn't really have wheels left, but it landed like if it would have landed on its wheels. What is this, like Fast and Furious? It sounds like something out of a, you know, Vin Diesel movie or something like that. I'm asking why do not they make cars that safe for the highway? Because, of course, Ryan went to the hospital. Right where he spent the night, but he tweeted out about midnight, that's racing, I'll be back. (laughs) All right, if I, well, I don't don't think I want to do it right now, but boy, you got me curious. I'm ready to surf over to YouTube, and I'll bet you it's on YouTube already. Oh, yes, it is. I've already 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 seen it more than once. So, So the answer, why don't they make cars like that for the highway is because That's all they are is a steel cage with a giant motor inside and one seat. So if you're taking four kids, you know, to softball practice or or to soccer practice, you know, or a herd of of critters to the veterinarian. Yeah, they're not fitting in the back seat because there is no back seat of a NASCAR race car. But you're right. I mean, they are super safe because they have to be. I mean, because they get into accidents like the one you accidents. They get into wrecks like the one you talked about. So. Now, wow, the wife I got to go look watched, that up. That's amazing. Now, the wife has watched many NASCAR races. Right. And, and and both of us sat there on the couch Saturday night going, oh, my God, I hope he's okay. I right. hope he's okay. Right. And, you know, they did. They You know, he was standing up when he got out of the car. Then they laid him on a stretcher, took him what they call the infield care center, and from there, they took him to the Daytona Hospital, which is really pretty close to the racetrack, thank goodness, where he spent the night. But they did yeah. let him go the next day. Now, a few years ago, Ryan Newman had a similar crash at Daytona. But while it was flipping on the front stretch, it actually got hit a couple times. He was in the hospital probably about maybe four to five days but he did walk out of the hospital, but NASCAR world was pretty worried for the first couple of days. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. But, well, yeah, good for him. I but mean, it, what a ride. I don't think it was say. as violent, but it was very violent, but it wasn't as violent as Ryan's. Uh, well, right. it's funny. They're both Ryan's, <laughs> but Ryan Priest's uh, accident, because like I said, when Ryan Newman wrecked, they actually took like a, a tent and put it over the car while they took him out of the car. Oh, wow. So that told people, yeah, that told people, Oh my God. Yeah. This is bad. Yeah. He might be in pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And and there was actually rumors on the internet that he was, you know, on life support and everything else. Right. He confirmed, no, he was never on life support, but for the, 
first couple of days, and then nobody was saying nothing. But the most joyous sight there, he walked out of the hospital with his two daughters on each side, wow. holding their hands. And they had that, you know, up on that, that video, of course, up on all the NASCAR sites. So that was a beautiful sight. But yeah, if you want to see one of the most vicious accidents, now, now there was a couple accidents and some were, you know, a lot of cars involved. Right. This one only had two cars involved. Went in the infield and then did all the flips and airborne and everything else. Look up Ryan Priest, uh, you know, Daytona. Right. Speedway, Saturday. I night, will. Whatever. I will look that up just as soon as we are done. So did he hit something for all them flipping? Because, you know, normally well, you got to bounce he, off. As he, as he went up, because these guys are going like almost 200 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, when he hit the infield, I think there was probably a bump there or something. Yeah, in the grass. You know, you when mean. he hit the grass infield, yeah. that's when the first time he flew up into the air. And wow. I mean, he, he, like I said, watch the crash. One of the most violent crashes I have seen wow. in, NASCAR, in my NASCAR days, anyway. And well, now, you've now seen Dale a lot. Jr., I mean, Dale Sr., when he wrecked, and, you know, of course, he passed yeah. away at Daytona. Yeah. But that's before they did the safer barriers and things like that. His car went into the wall head on. Right. Now, the accident. If you watched it, didn't look that bad. I remember that. Yes, but that's when they—that's when they discovered or invented the ha, the Hans system or whatever, where they take the helmet. Actually, you know, it's got a, a lock on it where it locks to the seat. Right. You no, know, so your head can't. You know. Right, and there's that is. cage around it. To, well, I've seen that on the driver. There's like a like bars down at the bottom that keep your head from banging back and yeah. forth side to side as well. So yeah, that's. Well, yeah, well, a lot of tragedy came that, you know, development. And hopefully that's, I'm sure that has probably saved some lives since then. So unfortunately it took Dale Sr. to, you know, bring it around, but there you go. Progress goes on or something. Yes. Some, some fancy cliche there. So there you go. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm going to go watch that. So cool. You know, and it reminds me of driving around here in Gainesville, you know, <laughs> <laughs> reminds me of driving around. We were in Fort Myers. Yes, yes, it does. So pretty crazy. Now, so, another piece of news that you'll probably want to mention on today's podcast. It's been, you know, almost a year since me. we did our first podcast. And of course, we had a few hurricanes in between last season to talk about. Right. You, Bill Stevens, you are in the cone. I'm in the cone. I And the funny thing is, funny thing, uh, There's uh, what's funny about hurricanes? I don't know. But I woke up, same as always this morning, looked outside. I'm looking outside right now, turn around in my chair, sun shining, yard guys out there mowing the grass, doing their thing, sun shining, no breeze, no wind, no nothing. And then, you know, when you're, you know, when you're, <clears throat> Alexa, when she goes, you know, when your virtual digital assistant has the little yellow band at the top of the little Early nominating contests build momentum for 2024 contenders seeking the White House. C-SPAN is the place for political campaign enthusiasts, with unfiltered coverage surrounding the early primaries and caucuses, as well as speeches from key battleground states. Whether you're interested in your state's race or want to follow all of the political events, you can get immediate access to what the candidates are saying, plus nominating results in real time with a free mobile app. C-SPAN now. Or watch live on the C-SPAN networks. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Gizmo of the of the Echo or whatever it is. So I'll say, so, you know, I'll always, I'll see it when I wake up and I go, Alexa, what, you know, what are my notifications? And she says, the National Weather Service has issued a hurricane watch for Gainesville. And I'm like, say what? And then... I surfed over to weather.com where I'm looking at as we speak and good golly, Miss Molly, I am under a hurricane watch. So what's I, up I with that? I think we're under a tropical storm watch where we are. My, mine is actually a hurricane watch. It says hurricane watch and two more. Okay. I'm going to click on it now because I just got there just before the show started. So yes. 
So issued by uh, Jacksonville U.S. Weather Service, uh, affected eastern Alachua County. Well, I am not in eastern Alachua County. I am in, well, I guess I am. Yeah. <laughs> Hurricane watch remains, means hurricane force winds are possible in the next 48 hours for Gainesville, Gainesville Airport, Newman's Lake area. Ca equivalent category one hurricane force winds with peak winds that could be 65 to 85 miles an hour you yeah, it's, got it, it, to be kidding it, it, me it, it's it's churning out there and it's going to build and all right so if i go back is there like a can i yeah here's my radar let's look at my open up my radar here so right now the radar is totally well it's not totally clear there's the usual florida little bit of clouds blowing on through but it's like all right, maybe by three o'clock if the weather thing works. Yes, I might get some rain. So that's that's just insane to me. I mean, for starters, normally as we remember it, you know, back in the day, we would have days and days of of warnings and of have I just not been watching the news? Have I been that heads well, it's down? It's been out there, but things? I think the thing it, it's kind of been going slow. Over the Yucatan right. or whatever it is. Always down there but in Mexico But it's picking up speed as it's coming into Florida. So it should, if if the models are correct, it'll probably make its way all the way through Florida within right. 24 hours, all the way that, from coast to coast. Yeah, I just pushed the button there on the Weather Channel, and if you heard a female voice there, that was the Weather Channel girl starting to tell me what was going on. So, yeah, but technically... It's still way down just off of Cancun right now. I mean, well, no, that's even as of early Tuesday. So, yeah, it really doesn't get here. It doesn't. To Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon for me. I mean, Wednesday morning for Tampa. And then if it comes ashore, wow. All right. So, just it's crazy out there, BJ. And I will it's, tell it's people crazy. we recorded this on a Monday, which is uh, right. the 28th. Right. Of August. Right. When it uh, releases to the public, it will be Wednesday, the uh, 30th of August. So exactly. it will when this when this podcast goes out over the network. It will be blowing in Florida, folks. Amazing. Amazing. Again, we we are. I think you and I both are far enough inland. Oh, yeah. that I don't think we have a whole lot to worry about. I'm in actually one of the highest spots in the state. Yes. Well, so, good. no, I'm not worried at all. I mean, it's unless it was like a Category 5 coming to shore at, you know, Cedar Key or Daytona or something and coming this way. So, no, I'm not worried. But it's just interesting that for some reason I kind of missed this. I don't know. Well, you know, also, yeah, it's been out there for a while. Right. But, you know, now originally they were saying by the time it got landfall, It'd probably be a one. Right. Now they're saying when it hits land, it'll probably be a category three. Categories really? three, if that hits where you are, that can get pretty wild. That'll get my attention. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So I'm gonna I'm coming down to visit BJ Odom, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you could be, I mean, depending on where it goes, you could be in the cone too. So who knows? Like I said, we have a tropical storm watch right now. Right. It's really funny because my daughter teaches in Polk County. Right. But her Polk County, you know, where she teaches is basically pretty much by Orlando. Right. But the county actually starts, you know, closer to Tampa, you know, where the county line is. Yes. And so probably I would say Wednesday she will not be going to school because probably – they don't want the children to be, you know, right. at bus stops and right. walking to school with, you right. know, like even tropical storm force winds. Oh, man. So, yeah, I'm looking at the spaghetti model that shows all the different tracks. And they all, they're, they're all between Tampa and Tallahassee where it comes ashore. And and if it's if it's any of the southern ones, yeah, that's right over my neighborhood. So that's going to be interesting cool oh well you know whatever <laughs> well, we want to wish everyone good luck and yep hopefully there won't be a whole lot of property damage so there won't be a whole lot more right i don't know how much more they can raise insurance in florida homeowners I... that's one good thing about you renting yes well yes 
I mean, they, they, I'm sure that a, a, a part of the increase that they charged me when they renewed my lease included more for insurance, but yeah, it's spread out over two or 300 units. So I'm not paying like you are. I, I can, and I was talking to a friend about this the other day that I see a day coming in the not too distant future. There's my, you know, psychic friends talking. I see a day when there is no private insurance for property insurance in Florida, where the state is probably going to have to handle all of it because nobody wants that business. It's like, sure, you're making great money until the storm comes and then it's you're, you're out $10 billion to, you know, to replace all of Lee County or whatever. It's just insane. So I don't know how that's going to work. But yeah, renting. So far, so right. good with the renting. Well, I hate to go, you know, down a rabbit hole here this early in the podcast. <laughs> it's early in the show. Why not? We always do. <laughs> but we talked about this in episode 50. Talked about the COVID jab and how you are not into the COVID jab. I am not. Very healthy. I am. But, you know, I told you I would, you know, discuss it with my transplant doctors and yes, see what they have to say. Because they're talking, and the reason for this is they're talking about another round of boosters or shots or whatever. Yes. So anyway. And I have you, been told. You have been told. Yes. Go. Yes, get you it. should take it. So I will go get jabbed. But now I guess it won't come out until like end of October, somewhere in there. Or around October. Right. So they told me really, you know, because I always get the flu shop every year. Right. Last year, I got it, you know, in September. So I was going to, you know, I asked if I should get my flu shot. And they go, no, why don't you just wait until you get the, when the new COVID vaccine comes out and just get two jabs, two jabs in one. Oh, man. Seriously? You're going to look this like arm? a pin One in the arm. other arm. You're going to look like a pin cushion. You're going to be I'm like. man. I can take it. Okay. Yeah. You're Don't cry too bad. Don't whimper too much. But you know what? Much. Here's another thing, and I, and it's a bad thing, but it's a good thing with me. Like a lot of people, you get your flu shot. Yes. You kind of like have a little flu symptoms, maybe a little fever. That's how it works, yes. Same thing with the COVID shot. That's you how it works. I have a little fever, a little fatigue. Right. Now, I don't get that at all. Okay. I feel perfectly normal, which I think is great. <laughs> but my doctor says, well, you have a very low immune system. Right. So really, that's a bad sign because that means it's not doing a whole lot of good for you. <laughs> I mean, so, it is yeah. yeah, because I had it twice and I never, right. you know, I wasn't serious, never ended up in the hospital except for, you know, getting the presidential cocktail. Right. And I'm you not got, talking, you know, rum and coke either. Yeah, you got, yeah, we're not, no, we're not talking about, you got the thing. But, well, because you're, again, you're a special case. I mean. I don't want, I don't want to you know blow up your head any more than it already is but yeah you know they have they have an investment in you <laughs> and they'd like to keep it coming you know keep the keep the cash flow coming so and keep you alive yeah sure there's that okay but yeah I get it so so is Bill saying I am special <laughs> you're special you're so special oh my gosh so yeah 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 the only thing health wise the only thing that has showed up for me in the past week or so, and and it's it's totally hooked my attention that I can't. And I know I'm I'm holding this up to the camera, but nobody's watching on you know on on the podcast. But I think I have, I think I have my first age spot coming on oh. my, on my hand. I know I know BJ. Yeah, hold up I your got hand, them BJ. All. You I got, got them all. on my face. I got. That's you why got. I'm starting to grow a beard. Uh, oh, so you know what I read today. Spot. Uh -huh. I'm starting to grow a beard, you know, because, you know, kind of covers up some of the old geezer. So you, you think know. by so you think by growing a beard, you will look less geezer itch ish. No, because listen saying? to this. I just read this today. Too. OK, oh, OK, OK, OK. So I'm glad this led us somewhere here. If you want to look younger, shave that beard. Yes. A survey found men with beards look about five years older than those who are clean shaved. I totally believe that, don't you? I don't know how old do I look. I got a lot of, you know, I don't you have a beard like... yet, but it's starting. How how old do I look there? Yeah, you Bill? look like you 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 look like you belong in in a natural history museum right next to the skeleton <laughs> of the T Rex. 
So yeah, you've been around the block a few times. Sorry. So so you're growing. I don't. Yeah, I don't know about that. I I, I understand. I what do they call that? Roche, 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 what is it again, dear? Rosacea. Rosacea. Like oh, the that's the skin. Right that's here. the skin discoloration. Yes. That's so I'm the trying skin. to cover it up with a beard, but I'm looking like oh. eh, maybe the rosacea isn't that bad after I start. Looking when the beard it. comes in and it's solid gray, Santa Claus gray, yeah, you're probably going to change your mind. Yeah, I yeah, thought I've done that a couple of times. I'm going to grow a beard, and I start looking at it, and I go, "Oh man, I look old." Yeah. But then I shave it, and I look in the mirror, and I go, "Damn, I look old." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no avoiding it. There's there's just no avoiding it. So yeah, I don't. And again, I'm not 100% sure that that is an age spot on my hand there, right on my, my base of the thumb. Because when I was doing the, the pizza delivery thing, uh, you know, you get your hand burned about once a day, taking stuff out of the oven or whatever, or or slammed in a door somewhere or whatever. So I don't know if that's a leftover for that. So I'm going to check back in a couple of weeks, but it's it's right there in my face every day where I look down at my hand and it's like, I don't like that. That's not cool. <laughs> that old age, that old age thing sucks. Uh, no so, kidding. Yeah, I know, right? So you know, like you know. like if you are still in your twenties, thirties, forties, maybe even hitting fifty, right? Embrace it and be happy. Enjoy the hell if out you of get it. Get into the sixties, you're gonna go. This really sucks. I I my arm hurts, and I don't even know what I did. <laughs> He's got parts of him hurt. And he, and so here's my story. I'm watching, because uh, I do watch some videos for, you know, exercises for old folks and stuff like that. And some pretty little British girl in her purple tights and purple hair says, oh, we're going to do this little weight belt, this little weight workout where it's like, get your just get a little light dumbbell thing. And I've got a little 15 pound little dumbbell thing or whatever. And we're going to do this, this easy beginner 10 step workout it's like we're only going to do each exercise for a minute and then we're going to have a minute rest between it's going to be great and she's so cute and british and bubbly and all that and i'm like hey guys it is ryan i'm not sure if you know this about me but i'm a bit of a fun fanatic when i can i like to work but i like fun too it's a thing and now the truth is out there i can tell you about my favorite place to have fun chumba casino they have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week you can play for free anytime anywhere and each each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Great. I'm the, put my iPad on the chair. I'm, you know, either kneeling or sitting on the floor or standing or whatever. All right. So we do this and we do that and we do that. And at the end of it, I'm literally lying on the floor going. <laughs> and my head is swimming. And it's like for the next, it's been two days now. I think I did it. Friday, where you record this on Monday. It's been two days now, and every time I sit down, the front of my thighs just go, ouch, ouch. And I'm like, now, are you heavy serious? Are you, how heavy are your dumbbells? This one, like I said, I have, you only use one at a time, and it's 15 pounds. 15? So, so you're both hands, 15 pounds. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, you notice it. It's not like yeah, one of those. My little, dumbbells. Yeah. Mine are only two and a half and five pounds. Oh, two and a half. Come on. Now, Come my on. wife, though, yeah, yeah, she has a 162 pound dumbbell. Well, and I'm talking to him right now. <laughs> da dun dun. Da -dun. For... I'll be here all week, folks. <laughs> Try the Thanks. meal. <laughs> Thanks for coming, friends. Tip your waiters and waitress. Yeah, she has a 162 pound. Well, good for her. I hope she's <laughs> happy with that particular exercise program. I wish oh you would God. exercise a little bit more with a 162-pound dumbbell. Oh, another comeback. Okay. Really? Is that all you weigh is 162? Seriously? Yeah. That's awesome. That's now, awesome. Now, that is, and, and I don't want to gross anybody out, because it would definitely gross anybody out if they were seeing this live. Right. That's when I'm naked. Well, of course. <laughs> Duh. You don't count. Now, when I put on my jeans and I put on yeah. my shirt and I put my wallet in my pocket and everything oh, else, yeah. I'm about, you know, 169, 170 pounds. Oh, BS. You know, you don't, you're not, you're not wearing seven pounds of clothes. Oh, I, well, you don't know how 
thick my wallet is. Oh, there. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I don't... <laughs> so anyway, no matter what, BJ Odom somewhere in the range of a buck sixty-five to a buck seventy. Seriously, that is awesome. Good for you. Now, cause... when we were doing the BJ and Bill show before the right. transplant, right? I was at about one ninety. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Do you find? Do uh, I mean? Do you gain or see? My problem is, I can work hard and be really mindful, and I can lose a couple of pounds in a week if I'm being really good. And then I have a bad weekend, and boom, it's back immediately, like overnight. Maybe so, you just need to wait a few more years. A few more years. Oh, really? Because I was that way too. Okay. You know, like I could, you know, I could like eat real sensible and not right. go crazy. Right. And lose like two, three, four pounds in a week. Keep, keep and talking. Then boom. The next week you get back on the scale. Well, hell. Yeah. That was useless. And I'm right back where I was if I'm not a pound heavier. Tell me the but, tell me the answer. But now it just seems like, and I don't know if I will admit this, and we've talked about this on the podcast before. Right. And I don't know if it's being older or what, but I eat a whole lot less. Right. So even when I'm eating a lot, For I'm you. eating less than I did two or right. three years ago. For you, it's a lot less. Yeah. Yeah. I I remember, remember, yeah. Go ahead. I remember, I remember, you know, I used to, you know, like, especially when I did comedy, you know, and I would do a show and I, and I wouldn't even get out of the club till like midnight. Right. Then I had to go back to the hotel or, you know, if it was like, you know, within an hour drive, I'd drive back home, you know, but. I would always stop, shame on me, at McDonald's, go through the drive up. I would always usually get a couple cheeseburgers and french fries. Yep. Now I couldn't I can get a I can get like a cheeseburger, like a regular cheeseburger and fries, and okay, man, I can kill that off. But man, if I I when I if I would eat two cheeseburgers and fries, I would be so full. It'd be uncomfortable. But, yeah. But then, you know, oh, man, I wish I'd have got three hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right. So you've hit upon something. I do recognize that. I really do. That I'm still up here and my head, up in my head, in my brain, I'm still thinking like, oh, I can still eat like I did when I was 20 or 30. And that is, you know, just go to town and go crazy and chow down and whatever. And my stomach is after the fact, usually telling me, no, that was a really stupid thing you did there, Bill. How about like, you know, like your friend BJ, one cheeseburger, not two, you know, one slice of pizza. Well, maybe two slices of pizza, not the whole damn thing or whatever. You know, it's like, so yes, I get that. And that for me is that's the hardest habit to break because I agree with you. I, as I get older, I know that I could, if all you did was put x amount of food in front of me a smaller amount and i ate it i would feel full i would be fine i would be done but my again my brain is used to saying oh no look at that we're gonna have that whole thing of whatever because i may you know i live by myself i made dinner for myself i'm gonna eat the whole damn thing no leftovers and yeah i end up paying for it also when i was younger i loved the buffets yes oh all you can eat well, I'm going to get my money's worth. Yep. I'm going to eat for you. I'm going to eat for you. I'm going to eat for yep. you. And I'm going to eat for me. Yep. I don't even know if it'd be worth it for me to go to a buffet anymore. I I can't. Well, uh, we have a very good. And uh, what kind are you talking about? Are you talking about like the steak ones or the Chinese ones? Or what do you like? Now I think I'd still enjoy a Chinese buffet, but I wouldn't eat near. I wouldn't eat nearly what I used to. Right. I, the last couple of times we went to a Chinese buffet, I've went up, and instead of like filling my plate, you know, with with one of my favorite things, right. eating it, and then going back and filling my favorite with another thing. Right. It's like okay, take a little bit of this because I like that. Take right. A little bit of this, I like that. Right. I take a little bit of. That. I like maybe four of the things I really like, but I'll take just a little bit and I'll finish that. And sometimes I'll feel like, okay, I can eat a little bit more of, you know, the chicken or something like that. Right. So I may go up and get it. But I, I remember the day that I used to go to a Chinese restaurant and if I didn't have 
four plates, I felt like I was chipping myself. Right, right. And yes, and again, you've hit the nail on the head again, BJ. You're you're being very insightful today. That's in, that's impressive. <laughs> Another thing, I don't even try to go to uh, Corral, Golden Corral. Golden Corral. Our, I don't. We don't have one in town here. I don't know if you have one where you're at, but we, I think yeah. there's one in Claremont. I'm not for yeah. sure. There was one. There was one down. You know, we were in Winter Haven, yeah. and there was one in Fort Myers. That was the last one I think I went to, but. The last time I think I went to a Golden Corral, it seemed like everything except for the steak was fried. Yeah, I don't have. There was nothing really that wasn't fried. Yeah, I don't have real good memories of that either. This is just not good. Yeah, but the Chinese buffet, yeah, I could kill myself at a Chinese by eating by overeating. Absolutely. So yeah, there is a matter of yeah. Well, when I was working in Arcadia, you know, after the BJ and Bill show in in Southwest Florida, I moved up to Arcadia for a while and worked at a radio station. They had a good Chinese buffet there. In Arcadia? Yeah. Really? I don't know if it's still there, but it was there when I was there. And that's cool. been like six, seven, eight years ago now. Right, right. But I'll tell you what, because I live, what it was, we had the house in Fort Myers. And I did the morning show. So I had like a little, little camper trailer that I had not far from the radio station at a campground. So like. I would stay there four nights a week and then come back to Fort Myers and spend like, you know, three nights a week. Right. And so I bet you two or three times a week. Cause I was like all by myself and living in my little trailer. Didn't want to cook. Yep. I went to that Chinese buffet two yep. or three times a week. Yep. I was, I was a fat little boy when I, <laughs> when I left I Arcadia. Did. Oh my God. What happened to me? That's it. Now, you know, that's it. Yep. So you're right. It really is about recognizing that you should, can, should. Your body doesn't, you know, your body wants a little less. I don't know. I don't know what that is, but yeah, I have to, I'm working, I'm working on that. I'm a work in now, progress. Now, how do you do a sleep? I, I feel too that as I get older, I mean, I like, I used to like to sleep. I could sleep 12 hours. I could sleep 10 hours without yep. even, yep. without even blinking an eye when I yep. got it, you know, like, of course we did the morning show. Probably got like five hours of sleep, four hours of sleep back those days. But on the weekends, I'd sleep 10, 12 hours a day. I absolutely can't do that anymore. I can sleep maybe seven or eight and then I'm up and I'm, I'm, I'm going again. That's another thing coming up on break time here, but I'll finish that thought. That's another thing I'm recognizing when I, and I don't know if that's a fact of getting older. I think it is. I think it is part of getting older is that you don't sleep as much. I don't know why. You would think you'd sleep more, but maybe not. But yeah, I go to bed and I'm when my body wakes up, if it's like 730 or eight o'clock or whatever, again, my brain tries to take over just like going to the Chinese buffet. My brain tries to take over and says, oh, no, you're not getting up at 730. What are you crazy? You sleep until nine o'clock every day or 10, o'clock, you know, whatever. And so I'll try and go back to sleep, and sometimes I will, but then I wake up and I'm kind of like spacey and groggy, and it's like, yeah, I should have just got out of bed. So I guess the lesson here is that the old age thing is that listen listen to your body. <laughs> listen to the signals it's giving you because it probably knows better than your brain does because your brain's been thinking it's still 20 years old or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. You guys, you think about that. I will have a little more coffee. I don't know now, what BJ is going to do. Now, but... wait a minute. Before we Uh-oh. do the break. Oh, before we break. We're going to come back. Uh-oh. And I am going to beg and plead to our audience for them to send me information. Oh, okay. We'll talk about it after the break. And with that tease in mind, we will be right back. We're back. I'm Bill Stevens. That's BJ Odom. This is BJ and Bill, the podcast. And by the way, if you'd like, we would love it. And Early nominating contests build momentum for 2024 contenders seeking the White House. C-SPAN is the place for political campaign enthusiasts with unfiltered coverage surrounding the early primaries and caucuses, as well as speeches from key battleground states. 
Whether you're interested in your state's race or want to follow all of the political events, you can get immediate access to what the candidates are saying, plus nominating results in real time with the free mobile app. C-SPAN now or watch live on the C-SPAN networks. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Appreciate it. And, and be so thankful if you would uh, give this podcast a five-star review wherever you collect your podcasts from, whether that's Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever. They all have a way that you can review them. Stop by and leave us a good review. Again, just do a search. BJ and Bill Podcast. And wherever it is. And by the way, if you want to stop by the Facebook page, it's the same exact page, BJ and Bill podcast. Just do a search and stop by, leave some comments there, but leave that review first dog on it. Now, before the break, BJ Odom had some, he said he was going to beg and plead and ask for something from our audience. So he's back with us now and going to tell us exactly what the heck is going on here. Now I've talked about this for a few weeks in a few weeks, we will go on vacation. Right. And we're going to go up and visit family in Indiana. But on the way up, we'd like to, you know, maybe stop, do a few little things. And maybe on the way back, stop and do a few little things. You know, instead of, you know, I know a lot of people, oh, I'm ready. And they make that drive in one day. Not going to happen with me. But um, we're trying to think of things to do. Probably when we go up, we're probably basically going to go over to 75. Take 75 up to Chattanooga. Then over to 65. On the way back, I think we might hit 65, like coming out of Indiana. And then going over to 75. Right. So we'd go through like Knoxville and, you know, Eastern Kentucky. Sure. On the way home. Sure. I'm not for sure. We might do the opposite. We might. I don't know because, but I'm looking for suggestions on places to stop and things to do along the way. Now, I know you used to go to Cleveland. Maybe you have a few suggestions. Um, Yes, because for me, driving back to what used to be home in Cleveland, where family was and all that, it was I-75 all the way from Fort Myers to Cincinnati, Ohio. And then you would change over to 71 to go over to Cleveland. And um, there's actually, yeah, I mean, there's actually a Cleveland, Tennessee. Is it in Tennessee? Yeah. That... I remember stopping there and that was probably 25 years ago, but there was a, there was a dairy and a farm and an ice cream factory there that had a mm. really, yeah, that was, it was, um, wait, 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 I'm going to remember it. Cause they're still in business. Cause I still see their ice cream Mayfield, Mayfield ice cream and dairy products, yellow containers, super good ice cream. Um, and they had a little factory tour. I I'm into that sort of thing. So, so there's that, I mean, there's that, but yeah, you're going Will you go past, um, uh, what is that, uh, uh, Rock City? Will you go by Rock City and, uh, you know, the real old tourist attractions up there? What's the other one? Mammoth Cave? Is that the other one? Yeah, like I, together, I was right thinking there. about that. I was thinking about maybe going to Lookout Mountain. Lookout Mountain? There you go. I'd so, rather go to yeah. Makeout Mountain, but I guess we can go to Lookout Mountain. Yeah, I can't help you with that one. So, <laughs> Makeout Mountain. You could, you could try, but uh, that's But now I know a- we're going to start our vacation in Calhoun. Georgia. Calhoun, Georgia. And as we said, there's a Bucky's there, right? Yes. Yes. So there's that. So you got that tourist destination, that well known tourist destination of Bucky's. Yeah. Now, my wife would also like to go to um, Blairsville, Georgia. Really? Because there is an Odom's winery there. Really? And is that, wait a minute. All right. So keep talking. I'm going to look that up. Blairsville, Georgia. No kidding. Because I think we're going to go maybe to Calhoun over to Blairsville. And then just north of Blairsville is Helena or Helen, Georgia. Right, right, right. Which is kind of like a little German town. Okay. Got some little, you know, touristy trap things there. And look at that. You are correct. Odom Springs Vineyard 
in Blairsville, Georgia. Who knew? And 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 that's important and not important. That's interesting because Odom Springs Vineyard. Look at that. Who knew? That's fun. Uh, and that's important. Not important. Uh, it's close to our old friend Vicky. Miss Vicky and her husband live in Blue Ridge, Georgia. And Blairsville is literally 20 minutes away from where she's at. And I think Helen, Helena, or Helen, Helen, Georgia is in that area also. Uh, I'm looking at the map while we talk. I don't see it, but that doesn't mean that it's not a little itty bitty town somewhere. Now, Odom Springs Vineyard is actually closer to Blue Ridge. It's actually between Blairsville and Blue Ridge. You know, you could you could call up our old friend there and and you know at least have lunch or something like that on your drive. Well, I don't know if she's available, but I'm not going to speak for her. You know, she you know whatever. So there you go. That's kind of cool though. Kind of. Cool. You know, I wonder now. What do you think would happen if I go into the Odom, you know, winery? winery? Odom, yeah. Show Odom's my ID been... and say, "Hey, right. what do you got for me?" <laughs> <laughs> are there are there a lot of Odoms out there? Have you ever checked? I don't know. Now, when we were in Fort Myers, right? Every once in a while, I'd get a call from people saying, "Hey, are you really can't bump to the Odoms in Cape Coral?" Never met them. Don't know who they are. Uh huh. But I would get that question every now and again. Right. Now I know there's a Blue Moon Odom. Blue Moon Odom is that a there's that, a is Lamar that a Odom? Blue? Lamar, well, Lamar Odom, yeah, he's a basketball player, and I don't think your two are related. And Blue Moon was a baseball player. Oh, okay, okay. That, that and they're that and, and and they're both um, black. Yes. So I am a Caucasian. A Caucasian. You are as white as they come. Yes. So I don't know if we're related or not. I I would have. I think if, if it's somewhere, maybe down the line, who knows? But anything as as is know, possible. But this is highly unlikely. Yes. 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 And so, yeah. So I don't know if there's a whole lot out there or not. I, I've never really Googled the name to see, but I know like sometimes when I go on Facebook, cause I like to check, see if anybody has cloned me lately. Oh, right. Right. Cause that's a big thing now on Facebook. Yeah, apparently so it I'll is. look me up and sometimes it'll show me, you know, quite a few actual BJ Odoms that actually have pictures and, and, you know, they're real Facebook pages, but they're not me and they don't look like me. Oh, okay. Okay. But I don't know. So it's possible as well. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So I don't know how many is out there. I mean, you know, there's got to be quite well, a few. Got to be some somewhere. Got to be yeah. some somewhere. So, I mean. But most of my can folk is in Indiana. Indiana. And and what's their, how long were they there? I mean, what is their ethnic background or did they come over from Europe or something like You're that? Asking, you know, like I know some people are really into that. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm so not I either. Don't know. I have a, now, I have a, niece. my wife knows most of her yeah. kinfolk came from, I think, Germany. Right. Right. I don't know. My, yeah. my dad had kind of blondish red hair. I think he, somebody said he was like from, we, I don't know where he was from. Oh, I, okay. Yeah, he, was, I don't... he was from his mama. He was from Mary Odom. That was his mama. Yeah, your great grandma or your grandma. Yeah. I that was it. funny. Um, my name, I know I was named after my grandfather, Brian. Right, right. My first wife, because his wife was named Mary. My first wife was Mary. Kind of funny. Oh, well, you had a lot of connection there, apparently. Yes. Yeah. Go figure. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think yeah, I think we'll go to there and I'll show my ID. And now my brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Yeah. They like that area because <clears throat> they've actually been looking for property. Uh -huh. Or maybe a cabin in that area. Right. Well, they've actually been to this winery and they brought me back a hat that says, you know, Odom, Odom. Winery. Nice. And, and my wife has a couple wine glasses from. So now well, we've never been there. So on the way up to Indiana, we're going to go. Blairsville is. Well, Blue Ridge is out of the way. Blairsville is even more out of the way. I mean, you're not getting there by accident. You got to make plans and it's way off the beaten path. So yeah, you'll, that's, that's a drive for sure. 
I mean, even once you get to, I don't know, Atlanta. Well, I don't know about it. You, if you would go to Atlanta or whatever. Well, I'm we're going to be sure. north of Atlanta when we go oh, to Oh, it's Cali. way north, way, way, way. Blairsville is literally in the corner up there with Georgia and and Ten- Tennessee and South Carolina, I think. It's yeah, literally be, right yeah, there so, in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, so, we're, uh, we're going to go to Calhoun first, then we'll probably go over to the... Calhoun. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you got you got I mean, there's a lot of cool little places up there to to visit. I mean, um and if you're into the nature stuff, there's the Chattahoochee National Forest up there which is just gorgeous and there's a couple of little small towns. Um there's uh, Amicola Falls which is I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, sorry Georgia folk if I'm not but I'm pretty sure that's right. Amicola Falls is gorgeous, uh, you know, for a park with a waterfall and river and all that sort of thing to 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 see. So yeah, there's like there's plenty of good fun stuff to see up there. But anyway, this all started with BJ Odom taking suggestions of where he should go to visit. So I'll be very curious to see what comes in. Uh, you know, you can do it emailed, you can do it Facebook page, you can wherever you want. You know, get in touch with the show, and we'll we'll list off some of those you know high quality destinations not just bucky's <laughs> bj and bill podcast at gmail.com that's right bj and and remember you i always say this but just in case i'll say it again you got to spell out the and bj a n d bj and bill podcast at gmail.com so fire up the old uh, I was email in a tropical storm watch what's that now i'm in a tropical storm warning oh they changed it on you yeah for me yeah i'm in a tropical wow. storm warning warning all right let me go over to the let me go over to the weather channel here and do the update and see what happens here all right uh tropical storm idalia that's a weird name idalia okay so i am hmm, gainesville let's click on the gainesville locale here yep i am still in the hurricane watch um thunderstorms possible for me after 2 p.m so Thankfully, we record this on a Monday morning, but, you know, stay tuned and uh, I'll let you know. Maybe we'll have to do a you know, special update or something like that. Who knows? Now, as you and I were talking before the show recording started, of course, it doesn't matter whether you're in the cone or whether you've got a spaghetti string over you or whatever. When you see Jim Cantor show up in your backyard, <laughs> you know you are screwed. In trouble. It, in tr- you are just, it's like, oh, God, here's Jim. And they're setting up their, you know, they're setting up their little portable set out in the yard because he's going to have to, you know, show that he's out there by standing there in the storm. Dumbest thing ever, but it sure looks cool on TV, right? I mean, you could do that in a studio somewhere, but it looks cool. Now, I always liked, and and this had happened before, and I know you've seen it because we lived in Fort Myers quite a few years. We would have like a hurricane warning or hurricane watch or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And of course, all the little local TV guys have to fly out to the beach mm-hmm. and they're that standing there in their raincoat. And they're going, well, the, you know, the, the hurricane is coming. It'll probably be reaching shore in about another, you know, eight to 10 hours or, you know, right after it's over hurricane right. is coming through. And of course you'll see somebody playing volleyball in the background, you know, yes. the beach volleyball. And yes. You're going, can't be that bad out there, Leroy. Or, 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 and this, the only time you would see this would be during a hurricane at like Fort Myers beach, somebody out there trying to surf. Oh yeah. Cause there's, I mean, if you know, Fort Myers beach, like we do, you know, that high tide, high surf at Fort Myers beach is about six inches of a yeah. wave, you know? And okay. If the hurricane's coming, Ooh, it might get up to a foot or two. Oh boy. Now, of course, you know, we don't want to make light of the fact that the last storm that came through did a little bit more damage than that, but typically typically it's not that big a deal surf wise surf and which has been really interesting for me because now i'm here i am in gainesville so i've been to the beach at saint augustine and at jacksonville a few times and it's like wow real surf look at that yeah you actually see people out on boards doing a little yes it's been surprising it really has and it's it's that east coast and and the weird thing is it's like wait a minute the sun's going down why aren't i seeing a great sunset Oh yeah, that's right. I'm facing the wrong direction. <laughs> so it's 
is a whole that you got to, you know, your brain has to change. See, this is, we should do a whole show about getting old and the things that have to change in your brain and your body as we, as we get old. Well, speaking of uh, the weekend and the weekend, yes. seeing the ocean, seeing the ocean. Yes. I wouldn't doubt there was a young lady that you probably saw this weekend. Yes. There of course, was. again, BJ living vicariously through Bill and his <laughs> dating, dating life. life. So what did we do this last weekend? Um. <laughs> oh, he's getting quiet quick, folks. <laughs> he might not be able to say on the radio what he did all weekend. I'm not going to. There will be no details. But I will say that rather than because, well, for starters, Bill Stevens News, of course, as I mentioned last week, I'm not I'm out of the pizza business because we just couldn't make the schedule thing work. And I didn't want to I, I didn't want to work 40 hours a week because I'm old. Here we go again with the old thing. So I just quit the pizza thing that I if I need to go back, there's a 100 different places that can do it. So why does that matter, Bill? Well, that matters because now I have the whole weekend off. So so w- instead of me going over there like I would typically do on a Sunday, she came over here for the whole weekend. So we had the whole weekend together here in Gainesville. So there was That's no beach I'm... activity. No, there was no beach. There was plenty of activity. None of it related to a beach. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> you got High Lie up there. Maybe you went to High Lie. Yeah, perhaps. And you're not too far from Ocala. Maybe you went to Bubba Raceway. But, or some horse farm somewhere. And the answer to the, all of that would be no, we did none of that. Now, we did go to one of the very beautiful state parks with the springs. We went to Manatee Springs, no manatee this time of year, but still equally beautiful where you can wander around and put your foot in that freezing cold water. It's not really freezing cold, but when it's 95 degrees outside and the spring water is 72, it feels like freezing cold. Um, so we did that. And a couple of other fun things and, you know, went and saw a little live music had, had ate a little barbecue. All good. All good. Yeah, it was a it was a really, really good weekend, BJ Odom. And and yes, you can feel that you've had some vicarious thrills. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Now, you know, you know, we don't live in Fort Myers, Southwest Florida anymore, which there was plenty to do down there. Yep. But, you know, there's a lot of things you can do if you live in Florida or you're visiting Florida. You know, you always hear about the parks. Mm -hmm. You hear about the beaches, Mm -hmm. but there is other things you can do here in Florida. And, you know, we want to take a few day trips, you know, once we get back from our other vacation that we're getting ready to go on. Right. I really want to come to your area and maybe we can even meet up and you can bring your lady friend. Sure. I want to, I remember as a young child, I did it and I know it's in your area, but I think it's closer to Ocala. I want to go for a ride on the glass bottom boats. Right. That's Silver Springs in Ocala. You are yeah. correct. Yeah, that's Silver Spring. Now, that's, for me, that's, so that would probably be a good place to meet up because it's, what, maybe an hour north of you yeah. and 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 a little less than an hour south of me. So that would be a good thing. Yeah, Silver Springs. And I think that used to be a commercial park, you know, uh, and then didn't they give it, didn't they sell it back to the state? I think they did. I think they sold it back. To, I think the state runs it now, but I, I know, still but think I, they have. I think no. I, I think it's Silver Springs, but I could be wrong because I had the glass bottom boats. But yeah. I think that also may have been where they did like some of the Tarzan movies. Oh, it absolutely was. They did a lot of them there because of the nice clear water and all of that, where you could you know have that stuff and the boats and the jungle and the and I I now this might be one of those urban myth myth hard to say urban myth things. But I think that that's also where they had where some of the monkeys from the movie sets got loose and they still live there. There's still a population of 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 wild monkeys that live in the area. I think I think Yeah, I I think there's a monkey up. island somewhere around there. Well, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, here I go looking it up again. B.J. Odom. Good golly. You're just we're just full of all sorts of great ideas here today. So and while you're looking that up, another place that I want to go, which is a little bit further from you and also a little bit further from me here. In Central Florida, but it's on like it's things I did as a kid. Right and now, it's on my bucket list. I want to do it. Right, as a old person, I guess I can say. Right. I also want to go to Wikiwaki, and I want to watch the mermaids. I I love that. That's one of my 
real all-time favorite old Florida kind of things. Yes, it really is. It's now cool. I haven't it's been fun. there since I was a small child. I remember I went there within the first few months of when I originally moved to Florida, and that would have been like oh, 1982 or something like that. So yeah. So, but which is awesome, totally awesome. So I'm looking at the Silver Springs. Uh, I'm looking at the Silver Springs uh, thing, and yes, they still do the glass bottom boat tours. And uh, oh, there's a picture of a manatee and all that. So yes, Silver Springs. How far from my place to Silver Springs? Uh, from home to me, for me, 48 minute drive, easy. Well, that's easy. not bad. Yeah, just and literally, it's north of Ocala for me, but it's kind of on the far east side. So you're fine. No, so but yeah, that'd be a good, that'd be a good meetup place for sure. I will like, uh, see how far it is from me. Well, yeah. What's all right. So if I just did, uh, Claremont, right. Well, I'm just, I'm just going to do it from my house and that should be oh, okay. To do it. Okay. There you go. He's oh, that there. can't be, that's gotta be, that's gotta be Silver Springs, California. Oh, that's or Maryland. Cool. Silver Springs is in Maryland too. So yeah, you can look that up, but yeah, that's, there's a couple of attractions like that, that they consider like the old Florida kind of things. And wiki Wachi is definitely one of those silver Springs is definitely one of those. Um, you know, if you go down to, uh, there's a couple of the old, old, old state parks in Miami and stuff like that attractions like that. So yeah, there's lots of that cool stuff out there for sure. Yeah, It's a little further. It's a little further for me. It's an hour, 41 minutes from my house. Yeah, It's okay. It's fine. Yeah. When you get back to town, we'll figure that out. That'd, that'd, be, that'd be great. So now another thing, and I'm talking about things I did as a small child with my parents, right? Which I hear it's still in operation, but it's not nearly what it was back when I was a child. And I don't want any hate mail and mail from PETA, but as a small child, I used to love to go, and that's over there, kind of by uh, your new lady friend. Marine Land is still in existence. In fact, I was there with. The previous relationship, I mean, it was just around COVID times, I think. So it was probably two years ago or so like that. But yes, Marine Land is definitely still there. It's definitely cool. I mean, it's it's definitely old. As you walk around, you can tell it's been there for a long time. But yes, they still have the dolphin show. You still can do the right, you know, swim with the dolphin thing. It's very cool. They still have the tour and they do show. They did a lot of old movies there, too. They did a lot of the, you know, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea kind of movies out there. So there's a lot of memorabilia and stuff. I, I'd i recommend it. I think it's very cool, especially if you're going. It's very close to the Space Center, to Kennedy Space mm -hmm. Center. And now, have see, you been there lately? I, I've lived in Florida since the early 80s. Right. Me, too. And I hate to say it, but I have never been to the Space Center. Oh, I don't know if that's your thing or not. Of course, I'm a big technology and, you know, Star Wars and Star Trek guy and all that. So I love that kind of thing. And and I was there. I was there probably, I mean, literally back in my married day. Boy, I'm judging time by my relationships. Isn't that interesting? Um, back when both my parents were alive and back when I was married, we went there and it was probably 25 years ago. And you had the little bus tour and it was cute and all of that. And then... I went back again, probably on the same tour that I went to Marine land. So probably two years ago and they have updated, upgraded, rebuilt everything. And it's almost, they don't have rides, but it's very like Disney world kind of, I mean, it has that showbiz kind of like showy factor to it. It's really cool. They have one of the space shuttles there that you can walk around and touch and, you walk into one of the hangars with one of the gigantic rockets in it. And so I it's I'd recommend it. It's super for me. If you're into that sort of thing, super cool, super fun. It's a great I mean, it's a full day. It really is. I'm not yeah. into that sort of thing, but it was, you know, I think it would be cool. Now, I I did comedy one time in Cocoa. I think it was where is that? Cocoa, Cocoa Beach, Beach or right by yeah. Cocoa Beach. Yeah. And they had me. I mean, I don't know. Most clubs put you in like I hate to say this, but. Hellhole hotels, you know, where you got to worry about Roach Motel. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But they put me in a really nice hotel and I was right on the beach. Ooh. And I could go out the hotel out by the beach and I could see, you know, the, what would you call it, takeoff or launch? Right. Launch Blast stations. off. Yeah. Yeah. 
and there was a rocket there. It didn't go off while I was there. Right. I, I mean, I, clearly, I mean, that's how close I was. I could see the rocket. See oh, the yeah, that'd be awesome. And I'm going, oh, that's kind of cool. I should be here when, why don't yeah, they well, those hotel rooms are. Those hotel rooms are probably a lot more expensive when there's a launch scheduled. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know how much it was because, like I said, I was doing yeah. a comedy show. So right, right, right. That was part of my deal. So you're going, but you're going the other way. So you're going, we were talking about all those old Florida kinds of things, but you're looking for, so anyway, just to re recap, because we're coming up on our hour here, BJ Odom looking for suggestions to of, of what to do as he travels north on I-75 and then north on, what did you say, I-65? I don't know that one. Yeah, 65. Okay. I go does... through like yeah. Indiana and goes oh, okay. Kentucky. Actually, oh, you Indiana. have to go Ooh. on sixty. You have to go on sixty-five actually too to go to Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, okay. But what you would do? Assume... You would go up from here. Yeah. And you'd go to Chattanooga. Chattanooga, yes. And then you would uh, like veer off to the west and go to I sixty-five. Uh I see that. I see that. Yes. So yeah, you go to Chattanooga. Then you're going to be on I twenty-four which goes from Chattanooga to Nashville. And then is that it? You would pick up 65 in Nashville and you're going through exciting places uh, like uh, Bowling Green, Tennessee and Louisville. And that has the Corvette. And... That has the Corvette Museum. Oh, that's right. They used to build. They, I think they still they do still build do. Corvettes yeah, there. Build. Yes. And, oh, I'd definitely go to see that. And then uh, another cool thing, but I, I looked it up on YouTube. Right. And it looks like it's all really went downhill over the years. Right. But uh, there's a place called Cave City. It's got like a little touristy track, right. a lot of, you know, gift shops and stuff like that. And you can buy, you know, you know, rocks or not really rocks. But, you know, <laughs> right. Gems, I guess. Right. And uh, yeah, but uh, there, I saw a couple of YouTubes and look pretty. Now, there was a cool thing called Ghost ghost mountain or something like that and that looked cool but it's been closed so okay that wouldn't be open if i try to go there and you will go you will pass as you travel up i-65 of course you're going for to louisville you will pass not far to the east past owensboro kentucky a tiny little town on the ohio river where yours truly had one of his very 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 first radio gigs owensboro, you want to know who else Worked in Owensburg, Kentucky, Owensboro, Kentucky, where I just found that out the other day. Besides my good friend, Kent Jones, who we've spoken to about on this program, because that's yes. who got me the job there. Another one of our bosses. Who's that? Pete Paquette. I, did I know that? I may have talked to him. But I wonder where he was. Because when I was there, and I don't know when Pete was there, but there's another guy we need to have on the show, don't we? Yeah. Um. When I was there, there were literally four radio stations in that town. Two of them were owned by the newspaper. Two of them were owned by the cable TV company. And that was it. And they were and they were AM, FM, AM, FM. So it was the same company. And it was like the tiniest, tiniest little town. Owensboro, Kentucky at the time was well known for the fact that it, it was the corporate headquarters for Red Man Chewing Tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> and they've probably changed the name since then so who knows so anyway now, actually, so look at that pete, more people to get on the show with us awesome now pete actually lives probably 30 minutes from me if that yeah now he still works uh at salem communications in orlando he's the ops manager there and i believe he does one of the morning shows on kind of the huh? one of the talk stations that they own. wow Cool. Good for him. So he'd be busy probably while we're doing this, but maybe we could find another time. And Absolutely. instead of having him join us on Zoom, I'd just have him come over to my house. And then Put after him. we did our little podcast, we can maybe do lunch or something. Hey, Put a microphone in front of him. Absolutely. Yeah. Put a microphone in front of him. That's great. That's great. Wow. We've covered a lot of ground and we're already five minutes past time. So look at that, oh, BJ Adam. It just flew today. It did because it's it, show number 52. A, a milestone show for the BJ and Bill podcast. So that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Love it. Any final words? Uh, nope. Like I said, I'll still be in town for another two broadcast. Right. And I still have no timetable of how long we will be gone. But, but the plan is that you will be doing the shows on the road. So yes. So that could be quite interesting. You and you and Jim Cantor will be somewhere out on the road doing the shows you and... know what might be good to do but i don't know if you would if you would be interested in doing it this way uh oh 
like maybe, you know, like, hey, today I'm here mm -hmm. and do like a 15 minute segment and then hold that. And then like when I move on, right, do another 15 minute segment from there. Oh. And then it's the end of the week. Kind of like a where's where's Jim where's Waldo? Tour segment. <laughs> yeah, where's that? Where's Waldo or BJ Odom and stitch them all together into one show? No, that would be cool. That would be maybe that could be like a special, you know, a special report kind of a thing or something. Yeah, I yeah, could do maybe do one in Calhoun and then yeah, one yeah. there at you know the Odom Winery. And you could tell us all about your exploits of the place where you're at. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, we'll do because that. Because now that you're not delivering pizza, you're probably around there during the day every once in a while. I am I'm available. I am available more than more often than not. So that's good. All right. All of that is in the works, ladies and gentlemen. In the meantime, if you are in the cone, please be safe out there. We will report on that as time goes. But other than that, have yourself a great week. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. And now it's just up to BJ Odom to say, see ya. Early contests build momentum for 2024 contenders seeking the White House. C-SPAN offers unfiltered coverage of events leading into early primaries and caucuses. Get access to speeches and results with the free app. C-SPAN now or watch live on the C-SPAN networks. Lucky Land Casino, asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.